Okay, today we're going to talk about addition strategies. Um, in third grade, we want the kids to really have their addition strategies down pretty good. Most of them come in knowing how to add, but what we notice is a lot of them come in knowing how to add by using the strategy counting on. For instance, if you see a kid with 4 plus 7, they might go 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Which I tell the kids right away, hey, you know, that's fine for right now, but when you're in ninth grade, you don't want to be using your fingers. So we're going to try to move away from that. One of, the, one of the things that we do is I tell the kids, you know what, you don't have to memorize every single addition fact, okay? But you do have to memorize a set of core facts and then use strategies based on those core facts that you memorize. And I'll show you what those are. Um, one of the strategies we teach the, kid is, the kids is plus zero. So anything plus zero is going to be that number. Most kids understand this one. The second one is plus one. Anything plus one is going to be just one greater than the original number. So 4 plus 1 is going to be 5. Again, most kids understand this one without a problem. Um, the one thing that we have noticed is a lot of kids do not have their doubles facts memorized. And this is one of the really essential ones for using other strategies. So I do tell the kids, this one, doubles, it needs to be memorized. It is important. 1 plus 1 equals 2. 2 plus 2 equals 4. 4 plus 4 equals 8. 6 plus 6 equals 12. What would be really helpful is if you went ahead and asked your kid, you know, what 7 plus 7? and see if they have that memorized. If they have to go 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and use their fingers or count in their head, they don't have it memorized. It should be this quick, 8 plus 8 equals 16. We want them to have those memorized because we're going to use them for other strategies that we're going to learn. So I tell the kids, very important. For instance, and the other thing that's very important that we want them to learn is their 10 partners. What any two numbers that equal 10 when they're added together. We want them to have those memorized. Because that's going to be another one that if they have those memorized, it's going to make it really easy to do some other strategies. So again, ask your kid, what's 4 plus 6? They should be able to tell you 10, just like that. If they can't, that's something that you want to work on, the 10 partners and the doubles. Because knowing those are going to really be helpful when we work on the double strategy called doubles plus 1. For instance, doubles plus 1 are basically any two numbers that are neighbors or right next door to each other. And for instance, we look at 5 plus 6. And what we're going to see that as is a lot of us are going to see that as 5 plus 6 is actually the same thing as saying 5 plus 5. I'm going to see that as the double 5 plus 5, and that equals 10. Well, if 5 plus 5 equals 10, then I know 5 plus 6 is going to actually equal 11 because that's what 6 is just one more than that 5. And the kids get this too once they understand those doubles. This makes total sense to them. The other one that's related is some kids are going to see 5 plus 6, and they're going to see this as actually the double 6 plus 6 equals 12. If 6 plus 6 equals 12, well then 5 plus 6 is going to be one less than that, and that's going to be 5 plus 6 is then going to equal 11. Some of the kids are going to use mostly doubles plus one. Some will use mostly doubles plus minus one. I tell the kids, whichever way your brain likes it, go ahead. And some kind of kids use a combination of either one depending on the problem that they're faced with. The next one that we really want the kids to, to start using, and the only way they can do this is if they have those doubles memorized, is something we call in-betweens. If there's only one number in between the two numbers, then we call it an in-between, and they can use their double strategy with us again. So for instance, 0 plus 2 only has 1 in between. 3 plus 4 only has 4 in between. 5 plus 7, well, what's in between 5 and 7? 6 is in between that. So we tell the kids if there's only one number in between, what you can actually do is take that number that's in between, 5, 6, 7, 6 is in between, and double that. And that's going to be your answer, 12. Kids are usually amazed that this works and we have to prove it to them. But what I explain it is, hey, 5, I could actually just take 7 and take 1 away from it, give it to the 5, and that is going to be 6, and that is going to be 6, and that's why that works. So again, really important that they know their doubles. Otherwise, these are going to be trickier for them. Um, another strategy with addition is called counting on. Sometimes it's the only strategy to use, but most of the kids coming into third grade think this is the only strategy they should use. It's not. This should be their last resort because it's not the quickest. This is when you say 6 plus 4 equals 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and use those fingers or a dot, or even touch points does this. And we're trying to get the kids to start memorizing some different facts. The only ones that really have to, are, are counting on ones, are usually the plus twos because there's no other strategy for that. But some kids are definitely going to start memorizing those. 
Now the strategy that's new to a lot of kids, but once they figured out, they tell me they love it, is a strategy called make 10. Again, this is where that knowing your 10 partners is gonna really come into play. You can use this strategy whenever it's possible to make a 10, and I'm gonna show you what that means. When you're faced with a problem like nine plus two, I tell the kids to take the largest number. Which one's the largest? Well, it's nine. And then I ask them, well, how many do you have to add to the nine to make it equal 10? Well, you have to add one to the nine, and that's gonna equal 10. Well, where do you get that one? You're gonna to have to grab it from the two. So two, you have to take away that one that you gave to nine. Well, what does that equal? That equals one. Now I can just add this up quite easily because most kids know 10 plus anything. They're really good at that. So 10 plus one is 11, and that's my answer. Another example, and again, you're gonna see where knowing those 10 partners is really gonna be beneficial. You'd look at the largest number, which is larger? Seven is larger. So you're gonna ask yourself, how many do I need to add to seven to make it 10. Remember, it's make 10. Well, you're gonna add three, because we know seven plus three equals 10. So if I add three to seven, seven plus three, that's gonna equal 10. Remember, that's my goal, to make 10. If I give that seven a three, it needs to come from somewhere. Where's it gonna come from? It's gonna come from the five. So five minus three equals two. 10 plus two equals 12. One more quick example. Now this one happens to have the larger number on the bottom. The kids don't understand, doesn't make a difference. You're just gonna find the larger one. How many do I need to give to eight or add to eight to make it to be 10? Two, because I know that, because I know my 10 partners. Eight plus two equals 10. Where did I get that two? I got it from the three. So I'm gonna subtract it from the two and that's gonna equal one. So eight plus three is like saying 10 plus one and the answer is 11. Again, really important to know your, your 10 partners for these, but it's also important to know your doubles for some other strategies. Another thing that I tell the kids is, wow, this seems like a lot to write for one problem, and it is at the beginning, but guess what? After you do this for a while, you're going to start doing it in your head, and they definitely will. First, I start out having the kids do it with their fingers, and then they start doing it on paper like this, and then they'll do it in their head, and a couple kids are already there. So again, practice those doubles, practice make the 10 partners in. Those are the only ones you have to memorize.